Hello dear friends, it's Tracy here to share a tutorial with you as we create the spring mixed media art tag. In this video you will learn how to dry brush gorgeous little birdie flowers for a soft shabby effect, heat emboss chipboard, create a focal point with ephemera and darling insect charms, and add shimmer and texture with sparkle paste and micro beads. I would be delighted to hear from you in the comments below. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. I die cut two tags from this gorgeous shabby chic bouquet paper collection. The focal design for the tag is this floral print that reminds me of shabby vintage wallpaper. I cut the base from a thin sheet of chipboard. You could also use cardboard packaging from a cereal or cracker box for your base. I trimmed a small amount from each side of the floral paper. I like to trim with a craft knife and ruler, but this doesn't need to be exact since we'll be distressing the edges, so you could use scissors or a trimmer, whatever is comfortable for you. After trimming, distress the edges. You can use a distress tool, but if you don't have one, you can use the edge of your scissors blade like I do here. I adore the soft, shabby feel of distressed edges. For the backing layer to completely cover the chipboard base, it is not distressed. Instead, I'm adding a bit of visual distress and definition by brushing just the edges with frayed burlap distress ink. Any medium to light brown ink would look nice. Next, the floral tag is inked. Since the edges are rough, it works better to lay the tag flat and move the brush in circular motions against the edges. This adds lovely definition. You can see here that only a small strip is trimmed off each edge, leaving a narrow border. You could trim more off if you want. However, I was going for more of a shabby edge than a distinctive border. To add subtle sparkling texture, apply whipped cream sparkle paste through the Butterfly Inspire stencil. This clear gel medium is infused with glitter for amazing shimmer while allowing the gorgeous background design to show through. This glitter paste dries quickly, so I set the tag aside while preparing the embellishments, and it was perfectly dry by the time I was ready to adhere the layers. Just look at this fantastic sparkle! Now let's create embellishments for our tag. I started by cutting several gears using Little Birdie's fabulous cogs and wheels dies. They cut through this thin chipboard so nicely and the variety of shapes and sizes is perfect for the tag. I also selected this prime chipboard medallion from the Blooms and Vines set. One of my go-to methods to create an amazing finish on chipboard is embossing powder. It's quick, easy, and beautiful. I found that using repositionable tape on a piece of scrap paper holds the chipboard in place while I work. An embossing dabber is easy to use with chipboard, but an embossing pad would also work. Sprinkle on shabby pink embossing powder, then heat emboss. I turn the heat tool on for a few moments until it is good and hot, then melt the embossing powder. Be sure to keep on moving as the powder melts. If the heat tool is left in place too long after it has melted, the powder can absorb back into the chipboard and lose the glossy enameled finish. This might look like a bit of a mess, but the enameled gears peel right off the paper. I had this tiny metal piece in my stash that's perfect for the center of the medallion. Silver isn't exactly a shabby fit, so it's brushed with white gesso. I ended up adding two more coats off camera to get the coverage I wanted. Here I'm brushing with shimmery sherbet tinted metallic paint. Most of the paint is removed from a dry fan brush. 
Use a light touch so only the raised design is colored. Since the embossing powder has gold flecks, I also rub on rich gold metallic wax, then a little more of the sherbet paint, transforming it into a perfectly shabby chic center for the medallion. These fabulous little birdie flowers are amazing right out of the package, but those of you who know me realize I enjoy softening them by lightly brushing with white gesso for a shabby feel. On the white flowers, I'm focusing on the green leaves and stems. A list of Little Birdie products used on this tag, including these gorgeous flowers and butterflies, can be found in the description box below. I imagine by now you've noticed the band-aid on my finger. I brushed up against a hot surface while cooking recently. It's healing well, but the band-aid looks nicer than the burn at this point. I'm also dry brushing these sweet 3D tulip embellishments. I found a pack of bee charms on Amazon a while back, and these tiny ones are perfect for the tag and are transformed by brushing them with rich gold wax. A soft but firm makeup brush works perfectly for this. This is my go-to method for adhering layers. I like to apply tape with a liner or backing around the edges, then squiggle silicone glue into the center. This glue allows time to adjust the layers, once set, I can remove the tape liner so that the edges are nice and secure and perfectly centered. I realized later, after the tag was completed, that I hadn't removed the tape liner, so that was done off camera. Tweezers are a great help for removing the liner. I repeated this process to adhere the floral paper, but I figure you understand the process having seen it once. The reinforcement ring is die cut from the background paper, inked for definition, and glued in place. You can see my creative process as I arrange and adhere the elements to the tag. I'll be sharing tips with you along the way. I used to use chicken wire a lot, but haven't pulled it out in quite a long time. Perhaps you have something in your stash that you can revive on a new project. I thought this white coated wire would be a nice textural background for a spring tag. The center of the tag will be covered with embellishments and flowers, so glue is applied to these areas that will be hidden. I set the glued side down onto the tag and then realized the glass dish filled with embellishments was the right size to weigh down the wire for a few minutes until the glue was set. That worked out perfectly. This glittered birdhouse and wreath make a gorgeous focal point for the tag. They are adhered with foam tape to add dimension. Tape doesn't always adhere well to glitter, so silicone glue is dabbed on as well for a secure hold. I'm using silicone glue to adhere most of the elements and flowers, adding in pieces of foam tape where needed to add dimension and to keep things level over the chicken wire.
To add stability to the paper sentiment, I'm adding a strip of chipboard to the bottom before adhering. Spatter is added with white drawing ink. You can always thin down gesso for spattering, but sometimes when gesso is thinned out, it loses its opacity, so I generally grab this ink which has the right viscosity for spattering and remains nice and white when dry. This darling braided jute from Little Birdie is just perfect to tie onto the tag. I simply adore texture, so of course I had to add bling around the edges. I'm brushing on matte gel medium, then sprinkling with microbeads. Little Birdie Mystique Rose microbeads are the perfect color here. I adore using different sized elements for texture, so I'm also sprinkling on some tiny gold microbeads from my stash. Be sure to leave open space when sprinkling them on to give a light and airy touch. This dimensional tag shimmers from top to bottom, from the stenciled sparkle paste to the glittered papers and embossed elements. I hope you've learned some new techniques to try out and are inspired to pull out your crafting supplies to create something new. Thanks so much for viewing. Please click on the subscribe button if you're new to my channel and would like to see more content like this. Here are a couple videos you might enjoy viewing. A link to the Little Birdie Craft Store can be found in the description below.